What's happening guys? My name is Jamie, this is the Norwich Reptile Shed and in this video I'm going to do a real simple guide and show you how I set up a basic vivarium for a corn snake. So like I said guys, this is going to be a very simple setup, uh, I'm just going to guide you through it. Um, I'm going to start with the vivarium that I'm using and this is a 4 foot Viv Exotic Vivarium. Um, I've already sealed all the edges, uh, this has been used for multiple different snakes, um, so it's all been disinfected. The equipment is already fitted, um, but I will show you what I use for a very basic setup and what I think is the absolute necessary for uh, these guys. Um, so let's start with the equipment. So what I'm using in this vivarium is a halogen heat source and that's going to be my Baskin light and that's going to provide my heat um, and in this it's quite a small snake going in here so I'm using a 20 watt uh, Lucky Reptile Mini Sun for this um, and they are perfectly fine, um, they, are, they burn really hot, really good lamps um, and very economical as well. And I've got this hooked up to a, um, obviously they've got the cage around it for protection. And I'm using, in this instance, I'm using a Komodo um, ceramic lamp holder. And then that's all hooked up to a dimming thermostat. Now you can use whatever thermostat you like, um, in, in, as long as it's dimming. Um, that is the really the recommended one. You don't really want to be using an on-off stat with a visible light like this. Um, it will... Um, turn off and on quite regularly throughout the day um, that's not very good for your reptile and that's also not very good for the lamp itself so in this instance i'm using a microclimate dimming thermostat but i use a whole variety of different brands and they're all fine um, next up is the lighting so i'm actually let me try and get that better i'm actually using a arcadia shade dweller in this um, and that's going to have the seven percent lamp inside it um, and that is a really good UV lamp to put in a small vivarium like this. It's perfectly big enough um, and it creates a real um, good UVI index um, and they last forever as well. I keep testing these guys and I keep getting a good UV index on there. So uh, yeah, really happy with them. Uh, and that's all hooked up to a timer. So that's on for 10 to 11 hours a day. Um, same as my heat and I let this drop down to room temperature at night. Um, which is perfectly fine for a corn snake. So one thing to note here as well, even though I've only got four foot to work with, I'm localizing my heat and my UV over to one side of the vivarium. That really helps with creating a little bit more of a natural gradient. We're gonna have some heat over this end, but where there's heat, there is also light. Um, and that kind of replicates the natural sunlight that these animals would find out in the wild. So next up is just substrate and I'm going to mix up a real simple blend of um, some ingredients to make a substrate. You could obviously go out to a shop and buy pre-made bags, um, but I don't tend to do that in the reptile shed because I'm using a lot more substrate than I could probably afford to buy in a reptile shop. This soil is going to work absolutely fine and also could technically support some life if you wanted to go down the bioactive route um, as well. For me I'm going to keep it naturalistic. Um, there probably will be some stuff in there but I'm not going to go out of my way to make a bioactive setup in this vivarium. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some topsoil in. So this is the topsoil that I use. Just a nice sterile topsoil. Um, in the UK we can buy this in all manner of DIY shops, garden centers, anything like that. Really easy to buy. So I'm gonna pour this in first and that's gonna be the bulk of my um, substrate. So next up, I'm gonna pour some play sand in here and I'm probably only gonna put maybe less than a quarter of this amount of topsoil I'm going to use as play sand um, so not a lot at all just a few a few handfuls um, just helps kind of bring that naturalistic kind of look to the soil 
And then while I'm at it, I'm also gonna throw in some handfuls of orchid bark. Again, that's gonna help with the soil. Uh, that's gonna help with uh, helping it look a little bit more natural. Um, it's just gonna create some, a little bit more texture as well. So now I've mixed up all the blend of substrates um, and we've got a nice substrate evenly over the uh, bottom of the vivarium. I'm gonna add some rocks in. Um, so I'm gonna throw a couple of these rocks in. You can buy these from a garden center. Um, you might even be able to just find them out and about. Um, so uh, yeah, and they really help keep that basking spot nice and warm. They help create a natural area that the reptile in the wild would probably seek out um, to help absorb a lot of that sunlight. Um, and they also help keep the vivarium warm um, during the night um, and during the day and they help hold that heat so they are quite useful in terms of energy saving as well so we're going to put these sort of directly underneath the heat lamp and spread them around a bit so now that we've got the rocks in the basking spot we can think about some areas for the snake to hide so it's important to have hiding spots spread across the entire length of the vivarium um, so they can bask in the cooler areas, the warmer areas and in between wherever they want to and feel secure and safe and hide away. Um, and for this I'm going to use a mixture of branches which is also going to help with the climbing stuff um, as well as some cork that I've got um, and just general, you can use just general bits of wood that you find in the woods or anything like that. Um, anything that kind of just creates a little bit of a, um, a secluded area. So uh, let's throw them in. Okay, so I've added a few bits of branch. Um, they will double up as little extra areas to hide as well as the snake to elevate itself off the ground. Um, so it can be as simple as just finding some branches in your local woodland, park, whatever. Um, and um, yeah, tend to stick to more harder woods. Um, I normally go for stuff like oak and birch um, and bits like that. Um, and then just give them a wash down and throw them in. Um, I don't bake them, I don't sterilize them, don't really need to do that in the UK, it's absolutely fine. Um, just my, my rules for collecting branches and leaf litter is as simple as I don't go too near farmland, um, I don't go too near the road and I don't go near water as well. So uh, as long as you can find a nice um, bit of woodland you're absolutely fine. Okay guys this is starting to look really cool, uh, what I'm going to do now is throw some leaf litter in here. Okay, so that's the vivarium complete. I've just put the water bowl in the cool side and uh, yeah, let's just get the snake inside. See how she looks. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video, just a nice simple guide on how to set up a corn snake vivarium. Please don't forget to check the channel out for more videos including some massive builds uh, for some really cool animals uh, and just generally loads of fun stuff to do with reptiles. Please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't and if you want to support the channel even further head over to Patreon where there is a link in the description and I'll catch you guys in the next video.